<laughs> okay, cool. So we are live. Hello, everybody. We are live for the third episode of the Dasmatia podcast. Today with me is Darshan um, M, <laughs> a co-founder of um, Devi, which is India's leading um, at leisure. I like that. I like that term, at leisure um, brand. Hey, Darshan. Happy to have you here. Hi, Ansa. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> okay, cool. So I was just checking that we are live on Facebook and we are. So everything should be working fine. Um, if anything, just drop us in comments um, your questions. Uh, okay, cool. So let's get this started. Um, I just want to take a moment to introduce you, Darshan, and to tell you that I'm really, really happy uh, to have you um, on the podcast today. So Darshan is the founder of Devi, as I said, which is a su sustainable, because this is the thing, this is the trick, active lifestyle brand from India. And actually, Devi is the, like, the, um, it's formed of two words, day and Devi, which both of them mean goddess, god, goddess, right? So um, at the basis of the belief of your company is that every woman is a goddess, right? Yes, actually, Devi is a very uh, traditional uh, Indian way of greeting women in India. So we generally call women Deviji, and Devi basically means goddess in Sanskrit, and including in if you look at Latin, Deity was formed mm -hmm. from the same day. So we we look at every woman as a goddess, and that's in our culture, and uh, the whole idea of this brand was to try and women uh, to help women remember that they are goddesses okay yeah absolutely and i was to, i was taking a look on your on your website and something that i found particularly interesting is that you make a difference between um well what a woman stands for in india and what she's looking for in terms of um active um, active uh, lifestyle brand and like your your market is prioritary India, right? So do you feel that there is a difference between what women are looking for in India and what women are looking for like in the West in the Western societies? Not really, actually, to be honest, uh, see we've like it's designed for India, but but I think as a brand, we are really designed for women everywhere. Uh, from where we came about is that we believe that. Uh, you know, all the existing active lifestyle brands that exist kind of show this anorexic model, you know, who's really thin, really, and they try and tell you this is perfect body type. Mm -hmm. And I have an issue with that, you know, because fit is nothing to do with being thin, right? Yeah. If you're losing weight, uh, you probably need to see a doctor. And, and uh, fit is about being strong. And, mm -hmm. and I have a problem that 99.9% .9 women probably across the world think fitness is losing weight, right? And I have a problem that all the Western brands, especially the big four, the Nike, Puma, Adidas, Reebok, uh, show you skinny women and they try and tell you this is what is the ideal body type. But the reality is the type. Your body shape is determined by your bone structure, right? If you have big hips, you have big hips. No diet, <laughs> no exercise is going to make it thin. Right. And yeah. and I have a problem with that. And my biggest worry is that even the new upcoming brands are talking the same language. They're showing extremely fit people. They're showing abnormally fit people as the models, which kind of alienates bulk of the regular customers all over the world. Right. I have encountered women who don't go to the gym because they're intimidated with what other people are wearing in the gym. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I feel like I honor, I honor very, very much what you're doing through the brand. Cause I was, I was also reading about this, right? Like your company, Devi believes that every woman is a goddess and she should learn to embrace her body the way that it is. And as you said, I feel that as women, we are faced with a lot of body image issues on a, on a daily basis, plus the society that comes with a lot of pressure because yeah, we are promoting a certain standard of, um, of beauty or fitness. Um, yeah. Um, okay. So I know that your co-founder is somebody who's very well known in India, right? It's Milin Soman. Yes. And he's, uh, a, he's yeah. a supermodel. He's an actor. He is a fitness icon. He has been uh, inspiring women in India, especially to get fit because he created an event called the Pinkathon, which is like a women's marathon. And he does this in over 20 locations. There are, millions of women who run today thanks to Milind and and uh, uh, 
Devi was actually an extension of what he already started because we realized that clothes were becoming a deterrent for some people. They wanted to run. They were motivated enough to get fit, uh, but there was not enough equipment. And, and there were a lot of women who came to us who said, I go to a Nike store, I don't get my size. And mm-hmm. she's not plus size. She's normal Indian woman, right? And and she doesn't get her size. And she sees an ad and they show the this extremely thin model. And then, and then she's like, I don't think I can ever fit into that, right? So which is why we ended up creating Devi. Yeah, yeah. So I understand that it was, um, so it's like on on one side, the sustainability part is very important, but it's on, it's not only about sustainability. It's also about really empowering women to believe that who they are and how they look like is okay. And they don't have to fit in this uh, societal standards. See, there's actually two parts to it, right? So we started off trying to empower women and Mm -hmm. Uh, in my journey to try and empower women, I realized that you cannot empower women truly if you're going to exploit some women at the factory or you're going to exploit some women at the farming level and you're going to exploit Mother Earth, right? Which is when we decided to become sustainable in our journey. And mm-hmm. and we said, we will work with fat rate. So we today are a fat rate company and we, we contribute a percentage of our turnover back to enriching the lives of farmers. Uh, we work with fat rate certified factories, which means factories pay life wages and not minimum wages, right? So we know that we are not short changing somebody else to empower you, right? So yeah. The end customer knows when they buy a product, they're not just enriching themselves, but they're enriching the planet, they're enriching everybody else that has worked on it. Every hand that it's gone through, it has added value to them. And mm-hmm. that is why we said that would truly be a work of the goddess, right? Yeah, I like that. I like I like how of course like this is this is the principle of sustainability understood like on all levels. It's not only about uh the products and I know that you are using uh fibers like uh, fair trade cotton, but you're also using sustainable recycled uh, plastic from um, PET bottles and other sustainable materials like grass, samba grass and darba. This, what, what is darba grass? <laughs> okay, so darba grass is actually very typically Indian. It's, it's a very traditional grass. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you should uh, Google it up. Uh, so it's a very ancient grass that's used in Vedic customs uh, for all types of meditations, for everything. So this is a grass that uh, supposedly, I'm not a scientist, so I, I'm I'm only telling you what it's claimed. It claims to have a lot of benefits. So I know it's used in Ayurvedic medicines. Uh, it claims to have uh, powers that it can restore energy. It can protect from um you know radiation and things like that so in ancient india so if a woman was pregnant they'll ask her to sleep on a darba grass mat Mm -hmm. uh, which prevents her from getting infections and stuff like that right so it is actually we didn't think about darba grass uh, so when we were uh, out there trying to make uh, we were uh, so i should actually backtrack a bit when we started making clothes we had a customer who came to us and said can you make organic mats Right. There was a customer who said, I hate waking up in the morning at 536 in the morning and smelling that PVC rubber smell that just is very irritating. Right. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. we said, "Okay, let's take the challenge and we tried creating organic, sustainable mats, eco friendly, biodegradable mats. And we started playing with grass. We started playing with different materials. So we made a grass mat and we started selling them and we have a mat. We call it Vajra. Vajra means diamond. Uh, it's like diamond. It's one of the best mats. It's woven by one old 64-year-old man in a village. He hand weaves it. And that mat is like a hot selling property. We've sold it everywhere from US, Mexico, Norway, Holland, uh, Germany, UK, Australia. We have customers all over buying it. Yeah. But we're not it's the yoga mat, right? mat, right? It's the yoga mat. Yeah. And when we were selling this mat, we actually had a yoga guru from Mysore who said, this is nice, but can you make one from Darba? And I was like, what is Darba? Just like you asked me. And then he explained what is Darba. And then I looked it up and I said, okay, let's try. And we created the Darba mat. Mm. So after that, we pushed the boundary and we said, now can we go beyond cotton, right? Cotton is still a crop that we're cutting for us to grow, right? Mm -hmm. Can we take wild stuff? So we started experimenting with bamboo, with banana, with with wild grass, with, with stuff that you don't need to plant, but they're available in the wild. 
and and we're experimenting and very soon probably we'll come up with lotus fabric soya fabrics eucalyptus fabrics yeah yeah so i remember because we we met um, in berlin at, it was the um... <laughs> fashion event yes exactly. Exactly, exactly. And I remember that you showed me all these fabrics that you were um, experimenting with. Yes. And I could like I could touch them, and it was. I, it's of course it's the feeling of the of the um, of the textile. But like now that you are talking more and more, I can also feel the spiritual side of uh, of Devi and like everything that you that you stand for. Um, how much do you make this visible? I, I'm curious, like from a marketing point of view, how much do you make? Because on the website, let's put it like that, you don't really get this mystical, spiritual side of your brand. It's more mm -hmm. about the sustainability and the women empowerment side. So actually, it is the uh, it's the issue with marketing. <laughs> <It is laughs> no, I'm just, curious, I'm just curious. I'm just curious if you position it or if you if there is talk around spirituality and if you're promoting through the brand also like Ayurveda, which is your uh, medical, like traditional medicine in India, right? Yes. So uh, honestly, we, we haven't explored the spiritual side of our business. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you ask me my long term vision and my big vision for the business uh, is that when we look at the vision and the mission of the business, right, is to make the world a healthier place mm -hmm. where we believe that if the woman of the fam of the house is healthy, the whole house is healthy, right? And then the whole community is healthy. So the whole world can become healthy if the women are healthy, right? So we started yeah. from there. And, and that's our spirituality that we, we look for. And we, we started the business because we wanted to empower women to get fit and didn't want clothes or the lack of clothes or the lack of options being a hindrance. But then as consumers kept asking us, can you make this? Can you make that? We started experimenting. So we had one consumer who asked me, you know, cotton is great, organic is great, but still cotton is, is a cash crop that you go and cut forest down and, and you're planting it. So now we're doing bamboo, we're doing, you know, wild uh, crops to see if that can be more sustainable, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we, we had a range where we needed to build in all the wicking antimicrobial all of that and it had to be dry fit and all of that so we had to do synthetic polyester but we said we won't do synthetic let's try and recycle plastic bottles right so we we try and see how we can make it work with with, with the kind of requests that the customers ask us but we are very clearly determined to go and fulfill the needs of customers and not tell them no yeah yeah and i honor that i find that very in interesting and very very important from a business standpoint because i think that all businesses kind of think about this how they can integrate the feedback that they get from customers but you are really going the extra mile to like make sure that you are still loyal to your sustainability principles while taking on suggestions from from your customers and sometimes they come with really great suggestions <laughs> actually if you listen to your customers you really don't need to worry about business yeah uh, Internally, uh, as a philosophy, as a design philosophy, what I tell my team all the time is that don't look westward, okay? Uh, every brand in India looks westward, right? Mm -hmm. They look at what's happening in the US, what's happening in Europe. Uh, every coffee shop wants to be an American coffee. Every, every brand wants to be an American or European brand, right? So they look at the trends that's happening there and then they follow it. Uh, yeah. We have a philosophy that I tell my team, look inward, right? It, I think we in India are privileged to have a huge cultural and history and tradition that goes centuries and thousands of years ago. So if I take something as simple as, let's take an antimicrobial property that today are Nike, Adidas, Reebok, Under Armour, Lululemon, and all of them claim, right? That they have clothes that are antimicrobial. What mm -hmm. is that antimicrobial property? It's nothing but just a silver wash, right? They, they put it into a chemical wash that with silver in it so it and the silver ensures that there's no bacterial growth at all and if you come to india you will see every household in india has a sari which is a traditional dress yeah. which they would have even their grandmother's sari would still be there with them which is over 100 150 years old how did that sari last how did that cotton fabric last 150 years only because those days 150 years ago they used to weave it with silver thread mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you look into India, you'll realize that we have had this technology centuries ago, which today the Western brands claim 
it's path breaking cutting edge technology <laughs> right? so last week at the we we launched our uh, water bottle for gyms and they made of copper they're not made of plastic they're not made of glass they're made of copper you can drop it it won't break it won't harm your health and scientifically it's proven that if you store water in copper vessels and drink it the ph level is the best for your body right yeah. it can even be anti carcinogenic right and this is something that every household the grandparents and the great grandparents have been telling for centuries drink water from copper every household in india has copper vessels has silver vessels and it's been in the culture mm-hmm. but we forget it we embrace the western world we go to mcdonald's eat the crap <laughs> eat, drink pepsi coke you know and then we fall ill right mm-hmm. all you need to do is look back and look what we did for centuries right and you have all the answers and that's what devi is trying to do so as much as we trying to empower women and and encourage a, a healthy lifestyle we also want to bring india to the world you yeah. know so there there's so many lessons that we have in our cultural history if we just bring them to life you know it's it's beautiful yeah yeah i i love this like i you get on a thing like i i have all sorts of uh, uh heartwarming moments because i realize that uh, devi is about a lot more than what i got out of uh seeing uh, your talks and like taking a look at your at your website because you're also celebrating your culture and as you said you are making more and more visible the indian culture and how we <laughs> westerners can actually learn from from your culture through through the brand so yeah i i love that um i was thinking in terms of success right because you are a very successful brand and you are a very successful brand on an international level so what would you attribute this success to i think honesty mm mm-hmm. we've been honest to what we wanted to do so even for instance in the last india fashion week we unveiled our designer wear collection designer active wear collection and we had a very well known designer in india called nida mehmood she had designed for lady gaga and so she was already a celebrity a bigger brand than brand devi when we approached her but we were very clear when 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 i met her i was very clear see we are indian we have india in our dna but not the india the way it's positioned in the tourist brochure brochure you know which is they just show holi and then they show these women with all that head cover that's not how traditional indians are right we are regular normal people then we fit in everywhere so i told her you take traditional indian designs the designs that people weave in sarees and ancient culture which we used to wear for weddings and stuff like that and create high fashion sportswear so mm-hmm. we actually made four designs uh, one for north one for south one for east and one for west india and we showcase the rich culture from across the country yeah. and and we stuck to our core theme of being indian right uh in india pretty much every e-commerce brand every brand whether e-commerce or not whether brick or mortar which or brand whether it's li li buys um or domestic indian brands everybody uses international models okay we have like everywhere else we have russians and all of them all over available they cheaper than the indian models to use right and clothes generally look good on those skinny yeah. models right but we as a brand decided we won't we will stick to only indian women we stick to real women we don't mm-hmm. use models we use real people we just completed a shoot with four people two are mothers one has a, one is a mother with a 15 year old kid other is a mother with the 2 year old kid uh, two other people are yoga teachers one is a student from college right but we use real people we don't use models we don't use um, people who are somebody you can't relate to you know somebody who don't live your lifestyle because yeah. uh, between milan and i we know a lot of stars we know a lot of athletes we know a lot of big people but i would never ever use a big star i will never have a usain bolt representing devi i will never have uh, any athlete representing devi i don't even allow milan to pose for devi because the difference between a level athlete who who has nothing to do you know who has who doesn't have to go pick up the kids run the groceries you know do the housework get to work is very different right they they live a life where they go straight to the gym they work out they pay to look good they work hard they, somebody else is doing everything else whereas real people have to 
do real stuff. We have to balance our lives. We have families, we have work, we have children, we have all of that. And amongst all that, women need to find time to get fit. Yeah. So we need role models that would appeal to people where they can relate to them and then say, yes, I get it. Yeah, and absolutely. that's what we're trying to promote. And that honesty is what's gotten us successful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like that. I was taking a look at the collection and I saw that there is the Indian print, traditional print, but it's reinterpreted and the colors are very vibrant. So the collection that you that you collaborated with um, Nida Mahmoud uh, for. Um, and I like what you're telling me about how uh, it's actually about your brand being relatable and so that every woman can actually understand that the things that you are created that you are creating were created for them and not for somebody who is like uh, very far from our daily routine and uh, actually from the Indian Indian lifestyle. Exactly. Yeah. And even if like I feel that the positioning is for Indian women, it's actually a brand that is very successful with uh, within like on an international level and probably from this, from the psychological proximity of every woman that can actually wear uh, Davy clothes uh, because they are for, I think that you have like three body types that you are that you presented um, on the website, mostly to show the diversity of body types and to show the fact that it's not only like one size fits all. <laughs> exactly. So yes. primarily in India, if you look at the audience in India, we have we, we're primarily four body types in India. Mm -hmm. So you have the pear shape, you have the apple, we have the hourglass, and then we have the, the straight fit. So we, we've customized most, most of the clothes for them. Uh, but, you know, based on requests, we're happy to do for the other body types. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so where do you see, what is the vision for Davy? Where do you see Davy in 10 years from now? I see Davy as one of the big international brands, you know, uh, the way I look at the market is the big four have been in existence for a long time and they've pretty much in every market, right? Despite the big four being there, we've seen the brands like Lululemon, Under Armour, and uh, Leaning, you know, every country has generated their own brand. And, and what hurts me is that India has yet to create a proper Indian brand that's globally well known. Okay, the biggest brand in India is a brand called Fab India, which makes very beautiful traditional woven Indian wear, mm -hmm. but it was found by a foreigner, not by an Indian. <laughs> you know, it's it's like the best guidebook to India is Lonely Planet, which is written by a foreigner, not by an Indian, right? <laughs> and, and I think there is an opportunity, right? India and, uh, has so much to offer, but people don't know. Right. So so I believe that there is an opportunity to create a beautiful Indian brand that we can take to the world. We can share our knowledge. We can share our experience. We can share our love to the whole world. Uh, we the end of the day. We are the country that gave yoga to the world. And if we don't give yoga away to the world, who else will? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, OK. At this moment in your life and in your business, what do you find most rewarding? I think uh, if I have to sum it up, uh, it's like, see, I ended up uh, coming across women who say uh, they don't go to a gym because they're intimidated with what people are wearing in the gym, right? And they feel if they go with what they're comfortable in, they would get ridiculed. So they don't go to the gym. They don't go work out. I mm -hmm. think the day I know that even one of these women actually started working out because they have Devi, it's the most rewarding experience I can ask for. Yeah, I <laughs> love that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, at the beginning of the the this at the, the beginning on this path, and probably now, you are inspired by certain people, or I don't know if only people. <laughs> but what is the most? What what are the things? What are the aspects that that you find most inspiring on your on your journey? And people. Uh, what <laughs> What I find interestingly uh, is is that you know we, when we started off we we bootstrap we're not largely funded uh, none of the big VCs have put money in so we don't have money to throw around and and there are a lot of brands that I see in India today with a lot of money and then they're just spraying and praying that it works uh, we've ended up getting a lot of word of mouth I've started seeing that we put a picture up and and there are people clicking that and tagging friends of them saying, look at this, right? Uh, so which is when I started realizing that we are actually doing something good because 
people don't refer otherwise, right? Uh -huh. and, and and we we've started experiencing that a lot of people who buy one product of ours come back and buy four or five. And and uh, so we 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 that kind of encourages us, that kind of fuels us to go forward and keep doing what we're doing. Uh, when we launched our yoga mats and they were priced at three and a half thousand Indian rupees, uh, which is like, um, how much is that? Uh, in euros, probably 20, 30 euros, right? Mm -hmm. And, and uh, which is expensive in India because you yeah. go to Amazon and, and you can get a yoga mat for two euros, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And people told us that nobody will buy it, right? And and this is the same mat that I was telling you that is woven by one artisan who's 65 years old and he weaves it by hand. Yeah. And today I'm not able to meet demand. Yeah. Uh, the orders are more than I can make because it's made by hand and it's made slowly. I cannot match it. And yeah. I have customers all over the world asking for it, but, but we have to very regularly go off uh, we go out and say we are not uh, available. It's sold out. Yeah. So I'm curious about this because you have only one person, uh, this 65-year-old man, who is uh, weaving it by hand. So that one man. Just him. Doesn't he have, like, any apprentice or? Oh, we've tried with his children. We tried with other assistants, but the quality is not the same. Oh. <laughs> and we're very finicky <laughs> about the quality. And, and what he can do, some of his children can't seem to do. Okay. So that one variant of the mat, we have like 10 different mats that now we make, but that one mat is just made by one person. Okay, okay, I get it. It's very interesting. It's very interesting how like this one person is creating basically these mats that are right, like being delivered all around the world. Yeah, and, and he's putting a spirit of him and sending it all over. Exactly, exactly. And he has a very specific probably way of not only working but of like creating uh, that match that is yeah absolutely unique um okay so we have a question uh, so okay. somebody saying hello darshan congratulations what are your main pieces of advice for somebody who wants to begin a similar business uh well my advice for him is very simple that do not start a business if you want to make money right? mm -hmm. start a business because you want to solve a problem and and we started only this business only because we realized that there is a problem and nobody was addressing it. And and uh, the day you're authentic to that, money will come. But if you if you create a business thinking, oh, the, there is this guy making lots of money selling this, I'll also make it, you're not going to succeed. Uh, you need to identify what's the problem and just focus on providing a solution and money will come automatically. Okay, cool. I like I like that. I like how you are leading through being of service, and then you feel that everything else will fall into place because it's more about creating something that is valuable for your customers than the actual profit. The profit, I guess, it's important too because you are you, like you create value for people. Value will automatically get created for you. Yeah. But yeah. you start yeah. shortchanging your customer, somebody will shortchange you sooner or later. That's <laughs> karma, right? In India, we believe in karma. <laughs> what you sow is what you reap. <laughs> yeah. So sunflower seeds and expect mangoes to bloom, right? <laughs> yeah. So uh, your whole team is based in India. In Bangalore, in India. Okay. Cool. Cool. That's that's I I honor that. I love the fact that you are very like I feel that you have this sense of um, I don't know if patriotic is the word. It's just that you feel very deeply rooted in your culture and you really really want to create. Um, more visibility for for India and for the people that are that are keeping Devi alive. Yes. Yeah. Be proud okay. of what we do. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, okay. So I, this was all. Like I'm curious about lots of other things, but I don't want to keep you very much. Um, thank you very much, Darshan. I just want to add that you are so people can find you on on your website. On website, on LinkedIn, on Twitter. Yeah, and then everywhere. So this is the website, Davy.com, and then you can find um, Davy on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook with Davy Official. This is um, this is the handle. This is the profile. Yes. Okay. Cool. Anything else that I forgot to mention? No. All good. Lovely speaking to you. 
and uh, do send me a, a copy of the a, a link to your thing, and I, I want to hear yeah. myself too. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, it's gonna be it's gonna be on YouTube. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna make sure to send you the link. Thank you very much, Darshan. It was yeah. a great pleasure, and I'm very very grateful. <laughs> Thank you. See you. <laughs> See you. Bye. Happy day. Bye.